Welcome to Jake and Trev Review Everything Live. I'm Jake. Oh, oh, oh shoot. I'm Trev. And uh, if you're joining us, this is week 65. If you're not joining us, it's still week 65. Uh, you, but you weren't here. Um, so that's where I'm addressing. We're going to address some things right off the bat. Number one, say hi to my mom. Mm -hmm. Say hi to Jake's dad. That's how this works. Uh, say hi to the other people in the chat and say hi to us. Let us know that you've joined us here. Uh, if you are, if you are in fact live with us, as you should be here on Wednesday nights at 10 o'clock, uh, 10.05 specifically, uh, we do have a chat going with uh, our people on Ustream while we're broadcasting this. If you're watching this on YouTube, hey, thanks for watching it on YouTube. But also you should watch it when it's live on Wednesdays. Yeah, buddy. So we got um, a few things to plug Plug in time. Plug it in. Plug, plug it, it in. in. Plug it in. <laughs> um, first off, uh, we are doing a site-wide... Uh, I, I don't... See, I, I don't know what to call it still. It's like a reboot. It's, it's a not reboot. really a reboot. It's sort of re it's a it's, soft reboot. It's it's more of like a re a reimagining. A reimagining of the original peanut butter disaster it's the, website. It's the all new, all different. <laughs> yeah. Chris Claremont wrote this one. Oh, God. Um, yeah, basically... Uh, we, we have a new setup for the website. It looks a lot nicer. It's a lot cleaner. Um, and we're planning on having a bunch of episodes out in February. So that's going to be a big time for mm -hmm. content. Um, over the Christmas season, it was a little hectic. We all kind of have our day jobs and stuff. So we weren't able to crank out a whole lot around that time. But um, it's the beginning of the year. Uh, as Red Letter Media would put it, "Fuck you, it's January." Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're going to work hard in January to bring you awesome stuff in February, and we're already halfway through the month. So in a little more than two weeks, we're just gonna blow your your fucking mind. Yeah, that's that's out. Written there. content, film content, live show content, planned show content. I don't even know. Uh, also, speaking of content, we have content. a new content creator. That's correct. Um, Michael you know, Keen. Michael Keen. Uh, I, I, it was funny. I asked him. I was like, "Do you do you want like a like a handle on the site or something?" He's like, "Like MK I, Ultra or something like that." Yeah, and he's like, "I don't believe in handles." Nah, dog. Badass. What? Just right off the bat. So like, if we were on like a CB <laughs> network, like we're trucking, you yeah. know, we're gonna it's gonna be it's like, like oh, this concrete cowboy. Uh, <laughs> what's, uh, what's your what's your six? This is Killer B. Killer B and concrete cowboy. What's your six? <laughs> You're like, this is Michael Keane. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> uh, Michael Keane, uh, like, yeah, you don't know? What's your truck? No, you know. What's your trucker <laughs> handle? Michael, Michael Keane. Oh. 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 We got ourselves a badass over <laughs> here. It was funny because I was talking to him and I, and I was like, well, I have like half a handle. Because it's like Jake, you know, Jake is my name. Mm -hmm. It's my actual name. Mm -hmm. Not actually my name. That's my nickname. Well, I guess it's, it's like... A quarter of a, because you know Jake's based off of Jacob, and then the salvage part is completely made up. Mm -hmm. Although it starts with the same letter as my last name, so maybe like. No, you just. I, I'm overthinking. Yeah. A third. It's a third legitimate. But in any case, uh, <laughs> so Michael Keynes rejoined us here, and uh, what's uh, what's the name of the show? What's his, it's, uh, it is show called about? Season Pass. Season Pass. He makes it with another fellow uh, named. Michael, I'm I, I'm gonna fuck this up real bad. Go to go to Twitter. Go to Twitter. We're going to Twitter. I, I'm gonna figure it out here. We're going to Twitter, maybe at the speed of the internet. Oh man, you just Google Twitter. Get ready. <laughs> Get set. Do you Ride remember? Ride on the internet. <laughs> no, I don't. Know. Oh yeah, okay. All right. Get, See, give me this. Give me Jake, that. Jake's a prolific Twitter on the on the Jake and Drive Twitter. Um, oh yeah, I do plenty of the uh, the midnight, the at midnight uh, hashtag wars. Those are fun. Yep. I like those. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I rarely uh, think to say uh, to type out any of the funny things I say uh, into Twitter for Twitterations. Hold on now. Hold on now. Let's see. Uh, we have <laughs> secrets. Uh, maybe just. Oh, maybe it's got to be like app. Yeah. Let's let's try that. In this episode of Jake and Trev review everything live, go to go to Chrome, go and do it in Chrome because the password's safe. Ah, I got it. Okay. See, it didn't take that. Hold on. 
We're gonna search for Twitter after Twitter. Oh my goodness. They're both a uh, Smallwood, Michael Smallwood. There Michael Keane and Michael Smallwood. They both do a podcast called Season Season Pass, and they talk about the shows that they're watching. And then they do the it's a short form video series where they break it down in like a scripted way. The podcast is more of them just bullshitting, kind of, very much like we're doing right now, except for it's a podcast instead of a instead of a ustream cast. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. They did. They're so far. They're working on the original Flash TV show, right. which I'm very interested in. It's always been one of those things because I remember when I was very small, my dad watched it, and I remember seeing parts of it. And then many years later, I mean, it got canceled. Obviously, in the '90s, there weren't like DVDs. Like you didn't get to catch it while it was on air, but here's a DVD. Like there, nobody gave a shit. It was like, oh, the show got canceled. Let's forget it forever. There was no Wikipedia to look it up on. There's no YouTube to find it on. It became one of those mythological, like I'm pretty sure that happened, but I can't prove it. It's hard to say. Thank, thank God for, for the sure. internet. But you know, so so they've been watching that episode for episode. I believe they just released an episode today on peanut butter disasters. Mm-hmm. The first one with the PB de Boom. 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 Um, so that was really interesting. It had to do with um, oh, what's his name? It was the kid from Never Ending Story Part Two. Oh. Uh, are you sure? That yeah. Was that? Uh-huh. Oh. He was in, uh, like, one episode, I guess. Jonathan Brandis. Jonathan Brandis, yeah. And Jonathan Brandis and a couple other people, they... Just just watch the episode. I'm it surprised. Was, it, it I'm was surprised. It was interesting, though. I'm surprised that the movie you used to identify him was Never Ending Story 2. It's the one I remember him the most It's kind of like... Hey, who's that guy who was the... Who was the, uh, wacky cop that was in, uh... Uh, any... Oh, God. What was it? <laughs> loose cannons. Well, who's the wacky, crazy cop in Loose Cannons? And you're like, Dan Aykroyd? And they're like, Yeah, that's him. Uh, it's like, That's the movie? <laughs> that's the, that's the Dan Aykroyd movie. <laughs> Wait, what? I know he was in like there was another big movie that he was in. And I can't for the life of me remember it. Jonathan Brandis. Yeah. Are you still talking about John? I saw it earlier today. My mind is just dying. Well, on me. it's 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 on my support inside of my skull. Well, <laughs> where I usually remember him from is uh, Sidekicks with uh, yeah. Chuck okay, Norris. that was a big one. Yeah. That was a big one. Uh, also, Sea Trek. I'm sorry, Sea Quest. I mean, <laughs> Star Quest. I mean, I mean, Stargate. I mean, uh, oh. it was it was. I mean, Seagate. It was Sea Quest. <laughs> it was absolutely Sea Quest. Um. With uh, Roy Scheider. Yeah. Scheider. Yeah. Isn't it Scheider? We're going to need a bigger no... seal head. <laughs> I remember that that show started out pretty straightforward. Like, it was like... And then it know, became Stargate. It was Stargate. There was, like, aliens and shit. The, well, there were was aliens. Like, wasn't there Atlantis? Was, was there not an Atlantis? Was there not an Atlantis in both Sea Trek and Stargate? Sea Quest. Yes. <laughs> See, now we <laughs> We're You're messing born. around with titles, and, I, and now I can't even get them. You're boring me now, Starquest. <laughs> uh, oh man, well, mom's here. Hi, mom. Uh, hey, Trish. You know how it works. Uh, Benjamin Hunter says, "Agree on Firefly." My dad last week. This is part of the chat near the end of the last uh, last week's episode. He said, uh, "Bring back Firefly." In a pro pro of nothing. <laughs> this is a general thing you want to say. Fi- I, you know. Well, so many people watch the show. Sure. It's literally everyone. Right. So, I mean, so, so everyone that's watching that would have the resources or ability to bring Firefly back for my dad. Do bring back Firefly. Bring back Firefly. Um, okay, Not so. For else. But yeah. Fuck off. Uh, season <laughs> Pass. It's on Peanut Butter Disaster now. It's awesome. It's great. You it's should awesome. check it out. Actually, give uh, them some love. Hold, hold on. One, one more thing. One more thing. Oh, my God. You, you, t- you talk about a thing, and I'll look this up. Oh, I get to talk about it. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, recently there's been kind of like this big kind of uh, interdimensional sort of event going on with, uh, well, it seems like a lot of characters over at Marvel, but specifically Spider-Man, where Spider-Mans from different universes and dimensions are getting together for, you know, to pal around and save the day and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, and I couldn't. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. 
I'm going to try to tell you more about this once I can actually look at the article again for some of the names. Oh, but, uh, the, uh, but, but, but here's the, the thing. The, 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 the thing is freezing. Okay, I just want to make sure we we're still on there because it's okay. freezing up there. Okay. Continue. But uh, one of the Spider-Men that got brought into official Marvel continuity now in terms of an alternate universe Spider-Man <laughs> was uh, Spider-Man from the crazy 1970s Japanese uh, Spider-Man adaptation. Where he has the giant robot. What? Spider Man! No. I swear. No. Yeah, he's he's a character. Is it a slow news week? Are you just making this shit I, right now? I, I like wish. you're literally making news. I right wish, now? dude. I wish that I was making up news this cool, but only in this time. Spider Man! Spider Man! So vaguely racist. Well, it's not really racist. That that's, actually happened. That's so how it's. I guess. That's how it's. That's how it's spelled, Jake. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, oh, let me see the. Uh, let me see that. No. Inappropriate. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, okay, this is on IO9 here. Okay, so our, Dan uh, Slott's Spider Verse event. Okay. Uh, Supida-Man! Oh, see? It says Supida, like the Japanese S U P A I D. Supida-Man! Da Man. Yeah, Supida-Man. I'm telling you. And then his giant robot, Leopardon. Uh, which is, a, that's okay. That's into the Marvel Universe, and then they have a, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here, oh, he, he's doing it, Jake. Uh, if oh, you can't, there's, snap. there's some, there's some, oh, no, there must be a gif on this page. Uh, I am not, get, get, get out of there. there. Get out of there. Okay. Oh, whew, whew. Wait, go, go back and check. Go back and check. Okay. Uh, okay. We're we are still doing okay. our best to avoid We're... technical difficulties right now. So uh, apparently, last in the last issue, they brought in Spider Man and this giant giant robot. Uh, but now there's even more that they brought in, including and this is a uh, I'm going to read you from the panel from the comic where there's a couple of Spider Men who are sitting in like a battle zone talking, and one of them says. Hey, you know what's really weird? One of Spider Man, one Spider Man would not st st would not stop singing show tunes. The other one says, "Yeah, I ran into one who kept trying to teach me English." <laughs> the other one says, "All right." One of them was unmasked, and I swear he looked just like the guy from Sea Biscuit. <laughs> the other says, "Really? I saw. I think I saw the guy from the Social Network over there." So it's all of the Spider Man, apparently. So as they point this out is, here, that's really yes, interesting. Apparently, there is truly no stopping Dan Slott's rampage through Spider Man's entire history, as the real Peter Parker and his comic counterparts have apparently just met one: the Spider Man from the Broadway musical Turn Off the Dark. Two, the Spider-Man from the classic educational show The Electric Company. Three, the Spidey from Sam Raimi movies. And four, the Amazing Spider-Man movies as well. That's awesome. See, okay, so if, if Spider-Man... Spider-Man! And, and Leopardon are going to be, like, permanent fixtures of the Marvel Universe, like the 616, I think, and I might be biased, but I think Deadpool should, should steal that shit. Should steal Leopardon? Leopardon, yeah. Oh, it, he did have a mech. There was a. I, I won't go too much into detail, but there was a, a, a short um, story where he met up with Bob, agent of Hydra, who had taken over being like a security guard in Vegas with a mech suit, and uh, Deadpool actually like weaseled his way into getting his own mech suit too. So like, a bunch of people had like mech suits. And, the anarchic uh, Spider-Man. Yeah, the, the the article at IO9, which is a, a great site, a great aggregate site, you should check it out. Uh, and some of their other ones, like uh, the Toy Box, uh, was it? Uh, Kotaku. Kotaku. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if uh, like, the video gaming and so forth is your yeah. wheelhouse. But uh, apparently there's the anarchic Spider-Man, who is a uh, figure in the Spider-Man Unlimited mobile game. <laughs> Uh, who's sort of a punk rock, uh, you know, uh, anarchy in the UK sort of Spider-Man. Yeah, ne n never mind the webbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, but yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Italian Spider-Man, oh uh, no. I don't know if they would. Uh, I don't you think, think they, they should. I don't well. think they should, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure Italian Spider-Man's a rapist or something. <laughs> yeah. Was he a bad guy? Or was that Turkish Spider-Man? 
Oh, that might be Turkish Spider Man. Yeah, because he fought, what was it, Captain America, Batman, and, uh, oh, who was the other one? Was it, was it El Santo? Did they, did El Santo no. play Spider Man? No. Well, it was the bootleg El Santo. I think it, it might like have Turkish El Santo. It might have been like a, a Turkish Captain America and then El Santo versus a Turkish Spider Man. That's okay, yeah. Spider Man! Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Hold on, let's, let's jump back to the chant. In any, any case, yeah, there's uh, there's some further speculation, but uh, on that note, Jake. Oh, we got. Uh, hey, everybody, uh, if you're just joining us, it uh, looks like our viewership jumped up drastically, so. Um, if you're joining us now, here's what we've covered so far. We've uh, welcomed new producer Michael King to the oh, site in his mm-hmm. show season pass. And now we're talking about uh, an interesting <laughs> spider event going on over in Marvel Comics. Okay, you where just want to say Spider Man again. Uh, shh, Jake. Let me, <laughs> oh, God. Let me okay. do it. All right, all right. Where we learned that not only is the 1970s Japanese Spider Man, Spider Man, uh, now uh, an official <laughs> Spider Man that exists in the, in the multiverse, uh, but as are uh, the ones from the most recent movies. Uh, the Tobey Maguire movies, uh, the the cartoon from the Electric Company, yeah. uh, and the uh, Turn Off the Dark, and the Turn Off the Dark Spider Man as well. These are all not just actors; these are legitimate Spider Men from real universes where they are Spider Man. Oh, yeah. turn, turn off the dark, turn and that's off cool. The lawsuits, and that's cool. That's very cool. I think it's funny. Oh man. Uh, also, oh, what? That's not news. Did you pull that up? I did pull that out. Uh, Nicky Nancy says hello, very much. Hello, hello, Nicky Nancy. Welcome. Uh, and my mom, my mom, listen, Jake, my mom loves the way I say, Spider Man! Okay, right. uh, uh, so, reel, reel it in, Peterson. <laughs> so, if my mom loves it, it's got to stay. She's another okay, one fan. That's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Okay. Uh, James Cameron uh, has announced that the Avatar sequels, three of them, are going to be delayed by another year. He's not Didn't ready. Didn't they say everything they needed to say? Like, I know that's like a... I, I've been thinking a lot about... This is like double tangent here, but I've been thinking about a lot about sayings about movies that are specifically, you know... Like, specifically movies, or at least, like, like fiction. Like, finite fiction. Where it's like, didn't, didn't we say everything we needed to say with the first Avatar? Like, that, that saying, I guess. Didn't it say everything it needed to say? It didn't even need to say anything, apparently, because the thing that it said sucked. <laughs> well, it the said that, that it, said is, it said that maybe, uh, maybe uh, forcing indigenous people from their land so that we can steal their resources isn't cool, you guys. Yeah, not maybe. anymore. Not anymore. Not there is anymore. a grandfather clause, <laughs> as far as that's concerned, in America. We're not doing that any, um, anymore. Yeah, it's so fucked up. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway. so so that's but yeah, no, I mean the only thing that really is coming now is the return. It's when the the people from Earth and the Unobtainium Company and their because why wouldn't they and their there private was no military and their pri- private military contract allies are going to come back and re- try to yeah. reestablish control of the planet, <laughs> and then it's going to be an even bigger fight. So I hope yeah. that the that the Pandorians uh, the the what are they called? I hope they brought a bunch of those spirit trees to help them out. Yeah. Hope oh, the spirit trees can learn to throw <laughs> fucking spirit guns <laughs> down on them or something. Uh, no, the, uh, what, what are they called? The... Did you say the Pandarians? Yeah. <laughs> no, those are, those are, I think, the pandas from, uh... World of Warcraft. From World of Warcraft. Which the is, pand- I, let, let's be honest, that's the dumbest name for Oh, it's the, it's, race. it takes... For a p- fictional panda race, the Pandarians, yeah, it's like, it's it's like you're joking, right? Like you're just told a funny joke. What, what do you call the humans in your universe? Oh, people lures. <laughs> Fuck you, I was drinking. <laughs> That's the best time to get laughs because <laughs> you'll remember it. <laughs> the people lures. The people lures. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so continuing in the in the uh, realm of strange Spider-Man news, uh, allegedly now uh, there's even there's still ongoing talks about it's Spider-Man it's going. Off. I don't know what they're doing here. It's it's yeah, because it was like Sony was talking about it because they're not satisfied with the way that Spider-Man's going. They had a bunch of movies planned. Obviously, Marvel is the number one movie planner. They will plan all of the movies. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers is in on it. Sony's in on it. I think Fox is too. I know they're launching. Doesn't Fantastic Four come out this year? Did we talk about that last week? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I, you know, every studio has their own, like, <clears throat> rip-off of okay. Marvel as far as scheduling things, but Sony is the first one to, to flounder so far because they were like, oh, we're going to make Amazing Spider-Man. Then we're going to make Amazing Spider-Man 2. Then, before Amazing Spider-Man 3, we're going to make The Sinister Six. And then, before Spider-Man 3, even in between Sinister Six and Spider-Man 3... We're going to make Black Cat. We're going to make Black Cat. We're going to make Venom. Venom slash Carnage. Venom, Venom Carnage. Mm-hmm. We're going to make a Silver Sable movie. There are two movies... There are literally two movies into their, like, ten movie plan. And they're like, I, I, we might just reboot Spider-Man next year. I don't know. Because they've been talking about that, too. They're like, oh, well, the Sinister Six movie might be an entirely different thing removed from the just stop. Amazing Spider-Man. Just, we'll just we, we'll stop <laughs> talking. We, we have to be careful. We all know that I'm prone to big, long rants about uh, how these true. movies are, are terrible. I know. And Trevor, if you have not been on the show... For those of you who watch the regular show, you may remember that watching <laughs> Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 2... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. We have a turned, a, we have, we turned have a, me evil. Yeah, I'm evil now, you guys, yeah. because of Spider-Man Two, of Spider-Man the Man Amazing too. Spider-Man. If you too. haven't seen it yet, go and see Jake Trevor review everything. <laughs> reviews uh, Spider-Man Two. I've been evil this whole time. I'm gonna get you. Don't. Just telling you. Just don't. Wait, I'm evil too, so you can't kill me. No, well, I guess we'll have to work together to take down Spider-Man. Spider-Man! Spider-Man. Oh, <laughs> it's not racist. All right. Uh, oh, and he, okay, he even screen, says in this article. He even screen says rant. Article. Uh, according to Screen Rant, the leaks revealed the you know the leaks the, the Sony, Sony leaks. leaks. The leaks revealed that Sony and Marvel were in discussions to potentially work out a deal. That would alter the course of, Spider- of Sony's current plans for the Amazing Spider-Man fr- franchise. Um, after lower than expected box office earnings and mixed reviews of the latest series installment, I love when I love when people are like, "I have mixed reviews." Like, y- almost uh, like a majority of the people are like, "That's shit," and they're like, "Oh, it was mixed reviews." There were people that said it was good. <laughs> it's like um, I don't. And it points out in the last decade they went from for Spider-Man franchise went from being the biggest superhero movie brand to the smallest out of the big four, and that is simply not acceptable for <laughs> Sony's decisions makers and the studio's bottom line. Smallest of the of the big four. Uh, That's crazy. Well, I mean, you know, if let's I be guess honest, Fox, if we didn't Fox. have if we didn't have Raimi Spider-Man, we wouldn't have like Batman. We wouldn't uh, have like Dark Knight. Uh, as a result, the plans for the Amazing Spider-Mans three and four, along with the spin-off Sinister Six and Venom, have four. Been, they were talking about four too. I've been in a state of flux, <laughs> drowning in rumors of cancellations. Needless to say, the buzz is not positive. Is that like a? Do you think that's a pun? Because he's Spider-Man and Buzz is like flying. Spiders get flying. I don't think that was a. I get. I. What began as rumors is now a reality, and the Sony leaks revealed that executive producers and filmmakers involved with Spider-Man would be meeting this month, January 2015, at a (laughs) summit to put together a plan for the iconic character. Reports confirmed that at one point, Marvel wanted to introduce their own version of Spider-Man, played by someone other than Andrew Garfield, because because Marvel hates Andrew Garfield. You piece of shit. Get out of here. You are not our Spider-Man. You don't even... Mm-mm. No, yeah. I, they wanted I, to introduce their own version of Spider-Man in Captain America: Civil War in May oh, 2016, wow. but Sony and Marvel couldn't come to an agreement in time to make that happen since the script is mostly done and filming begins soon. I see. That's that's disappointing because Spider-Man was really an integral part of Civil War. We went over that last week too. Mm-hmm. Were we trying to? Is this just all like? Are you reading all the same stuff we read? No, no, I swear. (laughs) Uh, And that's what Latino Review is sharing, or why uh, their Latino Review. Many of you remember from previous discussions that they're apparently they get the scoop. They get the scoop like before anyone else. They get the scoop. It's crazy. This this is on screen right now. They won't detail a source, and it could be speculation based on word of mouth. But their report explains that Spider Man will indeed be returning to the Marvel family in their live action film franchise. And will have a key role in the Avengers Infinity War Part 1 in 2018. What? Also, that's like three years. You know, we're going to have like a new president. (laughs) (laughs) Do you understand how long in the future that is? It's true. 
<laughs> that particular movie, as they explain, and as we've been discussed on the site before, will feature a very different team of heroes because of events that will occur in Phase 3 of the MCU. So, and, and they're addressing this too, I've heard in some of the promotional materials about um, Avengers uh, 2, that they're really excited to change up the Avengers roster here a little bit in Avengers 2 by adding some new people, assumedly kind of counting a couple people out. The Avengers is always uh, an always rotating roster of characters. Oh, so. yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, and that's and that's fine. I don't know how well audiences are going to take it. I mean, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. is not going to be the same age forever. Neither is anybody else that are playing the roles. I think there's another paragraph here about Chris Evans is possibly... Uh, let's see. Yeah, Kevin Feige explains something about whatever. I don't know. Skip it. Comic readers and Cap and Not Captain it. America fans can piece together what'll happen to Steve Rogers at the end of Civil War. If you know the comic line, the comic storyline that they're aping there, you you can. No, so spoilers. If if you don't know anything about anything, we'll plug your ears for a second. I'll hold my hand up. I'll put my hand down when we're done spoiling stuff. Okay. I like how we come up with different like little, little, little signals. Okay. Uh. So yeah, do you close. Not mute it. Turn yeah. away. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. All right. Okay. Uh, at the end of Civil War, Captain America is killed by the Red Skull, effectively. Oh, I almost wanted to put my hand down while you were saying that. That would have been a that'd be, move. That'd be terrible. But really, I mean, it, you know. Sure. Uh, or uh, with uh, the third Thor movie being called Thor Ragnarok, anybody who knows their their Norse mythology, and I'm not putting up a spoiler. In general, I'm not. Well, sure. I'm not putting up a hand a spoiler hand for that because. You know what? If you haven't taken an interest in North mythology up to this point, yeah. then um, but Ragnarok is uh, the Norse apocalypse, yeah. and pretty much every all of the gods die in the Norse apocalypse, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. take take that with with what you will. Um, so yeah, they're kind of speculating that it makes sense that we're going to be having a different Avengers crew for the yeah, next the, Avengers. Yeah, the rest of this is just looks like speculation. Maybe. Yep, rampant speculation. Right. Jumping back to the chat here. Let's see, Kier Kennedy says, hey guys, hey, hey Trev's mom and Jake's dad. He knows what's up. He knows what's up. Uh, well, after how rough Amazing Spider-Man 2 went, uh, I don't blame Sony. I, I skipped over the part where Kira said, even though I didn't hate it. Sure. Because you should. Just it's hate-worthy. It's, uh, like, the first one was just, like, it was, it kind of showed you where things were going. Amazing Spider-Man was, at worst, unimpressive. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but and it had the elements. Here's the thing: it was like it was the it was on a tipping point where it was like this movie is kind of bad, but it's got elements that could be salvaged if they go in that direction, or else it's just gonna fall over, and you know it's gonna be like that that clip of that car that rolls down the hill for sure. like five minutes and explodes. <laughs> right. From Which the, it did. From, it totally did. Because right. it didn't it didn't take any of like, you know, when people were like, Oh, we liked Spider Man's witty batter banter. We didn't like uh, a lot of the stupid shit that was in it, like the lizard trying to turn everybody into lizards, even though that's like the plot of every superhero like at least one installment of every superhero movie in like pre Avengers I'll had turn something everyone into it is it and then see I'm not a freak. Yeah. <laughs> or like Joker with his Joker gas or like Batman with uh Ra's al Ghul with, with his Ra's al Ghul gas. gas. <laughs> Everybody's trying to fill a city full of parts. Full of dangerous farts. That's that, that's what it is. I would call those uh, I would call that plot device the dangerous <laughs> fart. <laughs> For uh or in Avengers, when the Chitauri were trying to fart all over New York City. <laughs> that's that's pretty close. I mean, you know, they were opening a gate to get all the Chitauri to come in, but they were basically farts. <laughs> they were just farting so, all over the place. They were just farting all over the place. Uh, sure. And who knows? I mean, they're being or, from another planet. Oh, shit. Their farts could be dangerous. Right. <laughs> or, or in Captain America, the first Avenger, when the Red Skull had loaded up that big plane full of farts and he was going to fly it over North America? Yeah, he was going to blow up. North, he was going to blow up the United States of America with, with Red Skull farts. With Red Skull with farts. With Infinity Cube farts. Jeez. It's all farts, man. <laughs> it's all farts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. God. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, but, yeah. 
Uh, you are you are not incorrect to not blame them. Um, but on the other hand, you know, losing faith in their franchise and deciding that we need to, to restart everything is what kind of got them into this in the first place. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be fair... Hey, you know what would have been a franchise that they could have continued to add installments onto and build out of the universe that they had already created? <laughs> Spider-Man 3! That would have been a fucking movie that they could have built off of. Yeah, there were a lot of negative reactions to Spider-Man 3. I hated Spider-Man 3. But actually, but, you know... Yeah, no, if, 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 they, had, if they had taken... They, they, you know, they did the same with the original Superman. Like, nobody remembers Superman mm -hmm. 3. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and arguably Superman 4 and 5 weren't that great. But they kept going. Same with Batman before, you know, like, Batman Forever came out. And it wasn't, like, terrible, but it, you know, not that great. And Could you still, imagine if, if, like, the comics themselves were were that gun shy i mean yeah like every time so it was like, like they're in the middle of like telling like a five issue miniseries or whatever and by like the third one the sales are starting to dip it's like no start but over again the, the only time i ever had that happen there was a series i was following for a long time it happened uh right after secret invasion i believe it was called uh, the new warriors mm -hmm. and it was an awesome comic it was basically right after registration stuck so everybody had to register the new warriors were not regist registering to anything. A lot of them were mutants that were depowered, so they stole, like, old villain gadgets, like mm -hmm. stilt man stilts and shit like that. And fart man's farts. And fart man's farts. And, <laughs> and, and, and they were, like, uh, they were led by Jubilee, which was also interesting because she had a super suit that gave her better powers than what she had originally, oh. so it made her a little more badass. She kind of, the suit kind of looked like uh, the Flash from the uh, Stanley Imagine series. Mm, okay. Kind of like that. Um, but, yeah, so they, um, they had a really interesting run there. Well, she was kind of the de facto leader. Their actual leader was Thrasher, the, uh, originally skateboarding, uh, nightstick wielding punk type guy. Uh, it had kind of a convoluted thing. I think eventually, um, uh, it wasn't selling very well, but they didn't end it until like the i think it was like issue 28 or 30 or something like that and you're talking about a monthly release mm -hmm. so they had a, a series that wasn't doing well and they stuck with it for two and a half years there's no way that comic books would ever be that gun shy look at spider-man right mm -hmm. like i mean they well that's actually a really bad example because right after spider-man revealed everything in, in civil war they which isn't really a point spoiler because you're not going to have spider-man i mean on the long scale yes they're very gun shy over at, at the comics about keeping anything like uh like oh spoiler hand when captain america died at the end of civil war that didn't really last all that long of a period of time before they brought him back through some bullshit yeah yeah so i mean they, they definitely like have a, a status quo to preserve and anything that deviates too far from it Without basically, without being, an, right, without being an idea that the editors love, because if you get an idea that the editors love, it doesn't matter, like, you know, yeah. whether everybody else hates it. Yeah. Yeah, they, there have been a lot of shitty comic book things that where the, like, the artists or the writers were like, sorry, like, mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. have much of a choice. I wonder, I wonder of that, of those cases where the writer was like, my hands was tied, or my hands were tied, like, of those cases, how many go, like, unreported, basically? Mm -hmm. Like, where it's like, I don't want to my, make my bosses look bad because, you know, eventually I'm going to need another job. <laughs> you know? So I wonder how many times editors have been like, just, just fucking do it this way. Do what I say. Speaking of talking bad about your former, uh, your former uh, employer sort of thing after you leave, uh... Do you want to want to comment on yeah, what's going we, on over at Channel Awesome? We can talk about it. Uh, the important thing to note is that we only really the only things I've read personally mm -hmm. were from um, Lupus. people who were leaving. Yeah. Okay. So long Obscurus Lupus. Obscurus Lupus. Uh, I read the Thal Thalus's report. Yeah, I read I read Thalus's thing too. Um, okay. So to make a long story short, uh, where where you know, let's, let's let's frame this up a little bit. Sure. So if you're not familiar with like the reviewer world on the internet. It, it's very insular. There, there are very few uh, big outlets. The biggest being Channel Awesome. Mm -hmm. So Channel Awesome used to be basically like that guy with the glasses had all of his stuff on thatguywiththeglasses.com. And that was affiliated with Channel Awesome. Recently they 
they had a pickup, like a talent pickup, last year that was huge. Like apparently, like four thousand people applied. So you can tell, like the reviewer community on the internet is pretty big, just off those numbers. Right. Um, and, and it's important to note that the uh, biggest demographic of people who watch reviewer videos are other reviewers. So. Oh yeah, it, like I said, very insular. It's yeah. very. It's, 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 it, we're chasing our own tails out here. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, a lot of people want to be seen by more than just other reviewers, so Channel Awesome is a good place for that because people that aren't reviewers themselves go there a lot to see reviews. People who are fan of reviews that don't make reviews. Um, long story short, uh, they've had a huge um, stable of, I guess if you would say that, um, reviewers on Channel Awesome, and then after the pickup, they had, like, a million more. Like, right. you know, well, not so much like a huge roster originally, but they, they would pick people up from time to time. And they were they were they were <coughs> big viewership wise, I want to say, like, you know, it wasn't like a lot of people. It was like a lot of pull. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they added a lot of people. And apparently uh, some things went sour. I mean, the best thing to do would be to go to their tumblers. I know Phelos has a tumbler. tumbler. Uh, Scarce Lupus has a tumbler. Everybody's got a tumble. So, um, yeah, that's kind of basically the long and short of it is is that a few of the long-running reviewers kind of told all uh, after they left the site. Some were kicked off of the site. Some left because some people got kicked off of the site or weren't, weren't satisfied with the kind of dichotomy that was there where a select few number of people who ran the site and stuff were actually benefiting from it even profiting from it where other people weren't like getting anywhere and were even impeded by the site. I know um, Obscure Lupus said something like she was adding mid-rolls to her videos before she got her um, Patreon and they were like, well, you can't do that. It's making us look bad. And it's like, well, that's, you guys aren't paying me. <laughs> you know? Right. So if you guys aren't paying me and you that's, want me that's to be an on your site. That's point. Is, is that most of the people who are on Channel Awesome aren't being paid by Channel Awesome. Well, the more important part is, is that they <coughs> have to get paid because that is their job. Where, right. Whereas, you know, obviously on every, the level we do it has like a day job, you know? Well, like, the we're, most, not, we're not making any money off of this. But, yeah. but you I know, mean, basically you know, it's but, an exposure thing. Most yeah. of them are basically being paid as in terms of getting exposure, being introduced to a wider audience, having yeah. an example or having the opportunity to hang out in that stable Which of producers. Which is important. Right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything against that. I mean that's kind of part of our philosophy at Peanut Butter Absolutely. Disaster is that it's we're smart. we're helping each other bolster our views. If somebody goes for one of our videos and sees another video on the website, they might be more inclined to see it, knowing like, that we're so oh. fucking awesome. <laughs> They're like Oh, Saved by the Bell. I always watch Saved by the Bell before I went to school every day. Let's yeah, the, and then they, get, and they go over to Robbie's video, or, you know, they, they watch Robbie's video, and then they go over to, um, you know, uh, Kira's video, or they go to Tom's video, or, sure. or, or, or whatever. So, you know, it's it, we're trying to have a community. Uh, we also do a lot of crossovers, so people are introduced through the videos to other people who create videos. It's, it, you know, and that's what they do on Channel Awesome, too. Right. But, but the making your own money thing is is kind of like like I said we don't make money we're not to that point yet where we have that kind of view right but if if we were to do that that would probably be something that you know if we were making money off of videos that we were in solely or that we produced solely then that would be our money but I feel like one of the big things was that um, Obscurus Lupa was talking about how they got flown down for one of their big because Channel Awesome does like a huge DVD with a bunch of different reviewers on it every year, I guess. And um, they paid for airfare and that was it. So they had to pay their way there. They had to find a place to stay, you know, per diem, that kind of shit. And, you know, they were producing these DVDs and making money off these DVDs, but nobody was getting a cut or anything. And right. when when told, well, you know, you can either come or you, you don't or you don't have to come basically. Right. As far as Obscure, Obscure Lupa was talking about. So, you know, it's it's the kind of business and and you see this a lot. It's kind of shocking, but it kind of isn't when you see kind of an independent um kind of business 
where you're not really sure how it runs on the inside. It's not like a conventional business. It's not a storefront. You can't, you know, they, they, you're, you're operating kind of outside of the law in, in respects to things. You know, like if you're a movie studio, you have a, all your ducks in a row. If you're a TV show or, you know, you're a recording artist or something, for the most part, you know, everything's kind of set in stone. But when you're on the internet, when you have people on a website, there's, there's no thing that says, well, if these people are on your website, you have to pay them, or if they're in this movie, you know, like a lot of the times, I mean, there are probably contracts drawn up, but a lot of the, at, at least a lot of the, the um, reviewers don't have, like, representation. There's nobody, you know, sitting over their shoulder like, don't fucking sign that, you know what I mean? There's no reviewers union. Everybody's kind of, you know, out there by themselves. So, you know, it's it's kind of shocking when you pull back the curtain and you see that it, it reminds me and i won't go off on a tangent but it reminds me a lot of like the video game industry mm -hmm. where it, it's a much larger industry obviously but you know when they talk about studios that work people over time and then basically let them go as soon as the project's done or you know the the where they promise somebody a job higher up at some point in the future, but they never say right. when. They kind of string them right. along. Right there, there's a lot of the, there's yeah. a lot of leaps of faith and a lot of people taking people at their at their word and yeah. hoping that things work out in the future. Because you you have to you have to trust people that they will do the right thing when they when they tell you that they're going to do something or or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, so yeah, there's uh, some difficulty over there. Sorry to hear it, guys, over at Channel <laughs> Awesome. That's too bad that things are working Do out you, that way. See, see, and, and we did last year, uh, when we started the website, it was around this time, I, I think we put the website up in, in February, but I think we got the domain name in, like, January. So we've, the site's been up almost a year, by the way, so one year anniversary either passed or is coming up. I will have to look into that. I hadn't right. really thought about it. But, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, last year when we started the website, we put up a talent search on Peanut Butter Disaster. We picked a few people up. They were all awesome. Um, uh, we're probably going to do it again, but I feel like, is, do you think it would be gauche <laughs> if, we, if we put up, like, a talent search thing on their site again? Because we, they, I mean, they have forums where people will post their work that don't work directly for that guy with the glasses or channel awesome mm -hmm. where it's just kind of like a community feature it's the forums and you're like hey i made this review hey i make videos you guys yeah. Here's, here they are and so we, what you, tell me what you think yeah and we we put up a uh thing on there um just looking for people to put on the site which you know I guess it was kind of Goshen itself because we were on somebody else's site asking people to be on our site, but not really. Well, you know, I mean, unfortunately, because of the nature of the website, uh, the forums were also the largest community of people who are not, like people who are making review videos but are not affiliated with anybody. You know, if there was another yeah. place where everyone was hanging out... That did, that did video reviews, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure we would have went there first. That's probably the biggest like collection of non affiliated I wasn't reviewers. really joking when I said <laughs> the biggest demographic of fans for review videos are other people who make review videos. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um you know. I don't know. Yeah, we might we might shoot one up there. I mean we kinda have to. But, you know. <laughs> if we're if we yeah, exactly. If we're looking for other reviewers, I mean, you know, you go to the pond with the most fish. Right? I'm not calling anyone fish, by the way. I they were just fishing that metaphor. <laughs> oh, have you not seen this? I have not. It's it looks dumb. It looks. I, I'm I'm so sorry. My mom asks, <laughs> "Have you seen the trailer for Mordecai?" You know I'm a Johnny Depp fan, but what are your opinions? It's Johnny Depp has tried so hard, and if you like Johnny Depp, I I'm sorry. I'm I'm I'm. I'm going to say it anyways. Johnny Depp tries so hard not to be Johnny Depp in his movies. That he ends up in Johnny Depp in every movie? Yeah. That's like the that's the Johnny Depp paradox. When you move so far off of the spectrum that you end up back where you started. Like, in, in like an opposite... Jo movie Johnny Depp is like opposite universe real life Johnny Depp. That's how I look at it. Like he... Like, every time he, he picks up a role, he, like, slides into another dimension where Johnny Depp 
is this character, John, you know, like like in sliders, you know, when they when they go into a new place and it's like, oh, it's me, but it's like caveman me, or it's like, oh, it's me, but it's like steampunk me, <laughs> and, you know, it's like Johnny Depp does that every time he gets he accepts a new role. It's like, oh, it's me, but it's actually like Tonto me, <laughs> or yeah. it's like me, but it's pirate me. <laughs> like that's how I feel about Johnny Depp. And it, and it gets, it's it's like, just be, just go back to Earth One, Johnny Depp, and be Johnny Depp, Earth One, Johnny Depp Prime. Just be Johnny Depp Prime. So we're going to do a Jake and Trev watch. <laughs> so get Mordecai Trailer One uh, linked up on your YouTube in, an alt, in another tab. We'll give it a minute, Give obviously. me a minute to do this, obviously. Yeah. Um, There's a delay, a video delay. Mm-hmm. Rest assured, by the time you're seeing me say this, we're already watching it, but... Oh, yeah. But you won't know that. Yeah. Oh, shit, I told... Oh, no, you, you broke the... You, you broke you broke the internet. I blew... I blew it. You blew it. I blew you myself. I was trying to... I was trying to join Blue Man Group. I guess I went and blew myself. You should carry a recorder around with you, Jake, and listen to the way that you phrase things. <laughs> oh, Jake... You blowhard. <laughs> um, but no, here's the thing. I I, I kind of take from the context of that that even my mom, who's an ardent Johnny Depp fan, is not sure about this one. Okay. It looks like Johnny Depp is Arthur. Okay. From what I've seen, yeah, like, but I've only seen like only like seen drunk like, like drunk Playboy no, Arthur like, or like, King like Arthur, goofy British man. Oh, like, uh, like piano playing Arthur? What? What? I'm not Arthur? talking like cartoon kid show for kids Arthur either. No, like, I don't know what day? Arthur. Oh, like Knights of the Are Round? Are you talking about Arthur? Dudley Moore Arthur? Yes, Dudley Moore Arthur. Well, see, when I said lovable <laughs> drunk Arthur, that's Dudley Moore Arthur. I know. He was an alcoholic, Jake. No. That was his whole deal. I know, but like, he was he was goofy and British, though. I don't think Mordecai... Oh, so because I didn't say British, all of a sudden that wasn't an apt description. But not like goofy and British, like goofy and stereotypically British. Mm. Okay. Like, that's that's part... Let's be honest, that's part of Dudley. Is like, isn't he in, like, New York? So it's like, oh, how 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 British okay. in New York. So, <laughs> it's, it's but the very point I was trying to get to about all this is, is that... Um, it's funny, my dad said to me the other day, mm -hmm. he said, uh, you know, whenever we want to know whether we should watch something, we ask you what you think about it, and if you <laughs> liked it, then we figured it's probably a good shot that we'd like it. That's fair. Or if, we you, are, if you, you like it, if he, they we're, say, we're if professional. you liked okay. it, they, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. They said, if you, he said, if you liked it, then we know if we should probably stay away. Because, <laughs> no, and here's the thing, no, there are a lot of movies that my parents really liked that I, like, told them to stay away from. And then they were asking, well, like, what comedy movie do you think is really great? And I said, uh, I would say Hot Fuzz. You should watch Hot Fuzz. That's they a did not like Hot that Fuzz. That is a very, very funny movie. Oh, I love Hot Fuzz. hated it. My parents hated Hot Fuzz. They did not like it at all. And I can't even imagine. I, I can't. I, like, I'm I trying, can't. like... I talked to Jamie the other day, and, 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 and we were talking about it. I was like, did, I, I mean, I love Shaun of the Dead. I love Hot Fuzz. She's like, I don't like, I don't really like those movies. I was like, Jamie, we have to break up. All right. We, we reconciled. That's good. So, but, but yeah, and then we watched a clip of Hot Fuzz, and she laughed, and I was like, have you actually seen this movie? Because you seem to be enjoying it, at least the part that I'm playing. All right. Mordecai is it, trailer. Is it even pre it looks like it's like... It's good. It's buffered, it's, man. See, see, it uh, Okay, so we, we hit... So here you we should be watching it. Here, I'm going to restart. <laughs> We're going to re-roll it. I, should we do like a like a clap? Okay, go ahead, Jake. You do the clap. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, it, now, it, now it now it now it now it now it's not it's not playing. No, it's not gonna play. Oh good. Oh good. Oh good for you. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, 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 <laughs> All right. Reel it back. All right. I'm not. I'm not gonna clap. This We're gonna and, and, and three. Should we just do like a on one? When I go one, you hit play. On three, two, one. Wait, on like go or no? One? It. It's already don't like, don't leave done. the weapon, man. <laughs> don't you leave the weapon, me, Jake. <laughs> the 
He will thrill you. He will dazzle you. And most, most importantly, he will grow on you. How was it that that line wasn't very clear? It okay. really wasn't. I'm a man server, I don't, I don't need help with my bag. Ha <laughs> I don't I don't know. Is it I funny because I can't relate? Because I don't have a man server? Is that Is that why? No, I don't know. Is, is he is he like a spy? Well, is he, he like a like gentleman looked, thief? He looked like he was like I said, he looked like a like a like a rich you know, what I like, you know what I think this is? Huh. I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to probably backtrack on this and figure out a, a, a better or cle more clever thing to do with this. <laughs> uh, but I think this is what we're going to have here is a Mr. Magoo story. Uh, where, where he fumbles through and solves where, his Where <laughs> he's mistaken for somebody and he has to, he's an unlikely person to have to perform these tasks, but... He somehow bumbles and stumbles his way through it, and sure, well, you sure saw Ewan McGregor. Funny. Ewan McGregor seems to be his handler. So, so there's like a, a goofy man, straight man kind of dichotomy, where assumedly he's the one who does he's all the goofy stuff. He's completely out of touch. Yeah. Like, it's did, did did you not get any sort of Dudley Moore kind of feel in there though? A little bit, at yeah. least. Yeah, I, a little. All right, go 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 back to the chat here. Let's 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 see. Uh, See what we, we got. Uh, what about Paul? I wasn't shown in the dead or two. Yeah. Yeah. Paul. Paul was. Uh, was Paul wasn't, but Paul wasn't like part of the Cornetto trilogy. So. No, it wasn't. But it, but you know the you know Peg and Frost. They're a pretty good comedy duo. I love I love them. Obviously, I love Spaced. I love. Yeah, I, I still haven't seen um the the latest, the the third. Part of the Cornetto trilogy. The World's End. Yeah, I have not seen The World's End. I, I know. Isn't that we actually? Had it's, that like in our it's, Ryan, it's, it's like It's like Jake and I have like God. stubbornly refused to watch new movies recently. I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened. I stopped working at a movie theater, and then I got bulldozed. So <laughs> yeah, that that that. that, that. <laughs> Like yeah, Inspector kind of like, kind of like, like, the, in, yeah, like no, Inspector Clouseau. That's, that's a lot closer than Dudley Moore, I'll be honest. That's, but but yeah, like like, but like, like what I said about like a Mr. Magoo, like a Mr. Magoo yeah. story, like yeah, where yeah, 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 <laughs> where you get uh, like I said, where you bumble and, and stumble through yeah. an adventure, and somehow you make it out the other side, even though you have no skill set. That is handy for this. But but the problem. But then they're also billing him as kind of like a, a ladies' man, a la the ladies' man, where it's like he's he's good with like Olivia Munn was there, and then she showed him her cleavage, which I guess was also supposed to be funny. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Johnny Depp just it doesn't do it for me anymore. Johnny. Johnny, yeah, can, can, can I, I tell you something, Johnny? <laughs> can you, will you be my Johnny Depp surrogate for a moment, Jake? Hold on, you want to get a ridiculous hat on? Sorry, Johnny, uh, someone had to say it. Okay, Johnny, you you have enough money now that you can afford to be selected. Where's the rum gun? <laughs> God damn it. We can't stop here. This is back country. Oh, well, but that's those are lines that your characters say. Like you don't just like. Do you just say lines from movies you were in? Where's the wrong gun again? <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I want that to be an actual line from the it second Pirates was. of the Caribbean. It probably was. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Where's the rope going again? Again? Where did it go? Again. Because this is the second movie. Can I tell you something, though, about the Pirates of the Caribbean? Surprisingly, the fourth installment of Pirates of the Caribbean was shockingly entertaining. Really? Like, I, I, I did I not... I gave up con- after one, so. I did not constantly roll my eyes while watching it. <laughs> That's what I thought it was going to be. Just, yeah. fucking, just a high roll. Oh, fence. God. Oh, but kidding? no, it was, you know, I mean, it was just pretty good. But I understand it was based actually on a different novel. Like, somebody else wrote a novel about pirates and the Fountain of Youth and everything, and then oh, someone and then was like, like, oh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. <laughs> Well, that worked for Die Hard, let's be honest. Yeah. And, like, every installment of Die Hard was based off of either a script or a book. Mm-hmm. That originally wasn't John McClane, right? Mm-hmm. That's fair. Except for the fourth one, which was specifically written. I think that's the problem. Uh, can, can we talk about that? Can we, can we throw out, like, well, titles? Well, we, we, have, we have about five minutes left yeah, in the broadcast. Yeah, sure. Okay, so things that, when they became self-aware, became shitty... Examples would be like Indiana Jones 4, Die Hards 4 and 5. I still haven't seen 5. I guess I can't really be that judgmental if I haven't seen it. But, um, like, things like that. Mm -hmm. Community Season (laughs) 4. What would be be good? What do you think? Like, can can you think of anything? Hot Tub Time Machine 2. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, that's not even out. It exists. Have you seen the trailer for that? Yeah. More of Sam. Oh, the, the, I'll be honest. Like, I'm a huge John Cusack fan, and he was, like, way out of his element in that movie. Like, it wasn't bad. It was just, like, it was weird because that somebody, wrote, with those other somebody specifically wrote John Cusack into that movie to be John Cusack. In that movie. In that movie. And it was like, this is weird. This is weird. It's like if somebody wrote Robocop and it's a hot time machine. Like, you just get this. Like, Peter Weller's like, like walking around, yeah. like, yo, I move, creep. And it's like, <laughs> like we're crazy 80s guys. <laughs> like, what's going on? Here? Just, well, I, I guess he would be more in place because it's supposed to be the 80s. <laughs> and it's Robocop. Uh, I will admit, some of his movies are not that great. The Tourist was great. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that one either. I feel like that that would be closer because that's not Johnny Depp playing a goofy character. Mm -hmm. I kind of liked him in um, Secret Window, too. Rango? I liked him in Rango. I haven't haven't seen Rango yet. But he was... I don't know if that counts because he voice acted. And he voice acted a character that was basically Hunter S. Thompson, from what I hear. Not really. Not really. really. They, 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 They tricked you. They got you. Were Jake. they like? They were trying Hunter to pull you in. Lizard. He's gonna be a Hunter S. Thompson lizard, and it wasn't. Uh, he was. Yeah, he was. Uh, and he was like more like an eccentric actor lizard. Hmm. Like he had delusions of like you know being like a. Oh, okay. Playing roles and so forth. So it's, it's he was just Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars is also like episodes one through three. Where it's George Lucas was... I mean, if you have 15 years to sit there and and based in all of the admiration you got for Star Wars and was like, I'm going to make another Star Wars. <laughs> I got 20 years to think of what the coolest version of something called the Clone Wars that I could possibly come up with. And what I came with up with was a bunch of, uh, was a bunch of clones Literal fighting a clones. bunch of robots. Yeah. Couldn't, that's, couldn't, that's, think of, couldn't think any. You that's know, it. Clones and robots. Sounds good. That sounds fun. That's fine. Now, I'm not going to argue with you because you're George Lucas. So let's just get everyone in front of a big green wall <laughs> with, with, with big green accoutrement and, and just go, go nuts. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. And, and help me out here. What, uh, what, uh, what did George work on after Return of the Jedi? After Return? Mm-hmm. Was it Howard the Duck? You making fun of me? <laughs> Can we all sit here and agree that Howard the Duck was not his finest hour? Okay, Howard the Duck as a character I've always liked. Even in the movie, I kind of liked Howard the Duck. The plot was terrible. The special effects were, like, 80s to a detriment. I feel like they were trying to shoot for something that wouldn't be able to be done for another 15 years. 
So I'll admit, Howard the Duck is not a very good movie. I, I enjoy it. Sure, that's fine. But I was just going to point out that it seems that in the years after the original trilogy of Star Wars, George Lucas gave everyone more than enough reason to believe that there were chinks in the armor and that he, in uh, fact, could do wrong. But that was like it. What was that, it? Wait, I, I would love to. I mean, we don't really have time, but I would love to go. Maybe, maybe a little bit of an after show. We can, we can do. I, I got one more thing to say. Um, Trevor's mom says, "How about Dark Shadows?" I saw that in the theater, unfortunately, and unfortunately, it was a piece of shit. It was not at all true to the source material, which isn't always the most important thing, but it's usually a good jumping off point to tell how bad a movie is. How big of a departure is it from the original They material? went from dark, not funny, TV serial to completely trying to be funny movie... The, the TV show, it, it's like if you made uh, Days of Our Lives the movie and it starred, like, Will Ferrell and Amy Adams. <laughs> it's like, why exactly? It was very much like that. I remember there was one joke that made me realize what the entire movie was, and it was just Tim Burton, or whoever wrote the movie, because I know he had a heavy involvement in it. It was whoever wrote the movie thinking... Dark Shadows is from the 60s. What else is from the 60s? And then shoving all of the 60s things in there because the, the, the matron of the house at one point is talking to um, Johnny Depp's character, Dracula Von who, who gives a fuck, and they're in a room and she, somebody like opens a secret like room in the room, like on the wall, and it's all macrame. And she's like, that's my, that's my secret thing. I like macrame. And it's like, macrame, that's from the 60s. I remember the 60s. 60s had macrame. Like, that, was the, that was the whole thing. Somebody, they got a craftsman to go into that set and create a secret room for a joke that lasted like 20 seconds about macrame. That person will never put that, like, what have, what have you done? Oh, I made the secret room, the secret macrame room in Dark Shadows? You're not going to hire me. <laughs> I would go spreading that around, <laughs> yeah, Buster no, Brown. Maybe, you know, put that in your pocket. <laughs> uh, but that'll about do it for uh, the, oh, yeah. the hour. That'll do it for the live show here. Jake we're going to look up George. We're going we're gonna to talk about If you want to stick around, if you're watching this recorded, you're missing out. Because you're Ten. about to miss out on an after show portion where we yeah. talk a little bit more about George Lucas. That is correct. Um, Everyone loves it when we pile on George Lucas for a little while. Absolutely. But uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us next week. Same, same Jake and Trev time, same Jake and Trev Ustream. That's right. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, PBD, peanutbutterdisaster.com. Go check that out if you haven't. We have new layout. Uh, we have a new content creator, Michael Keane. Welcome again. Um, that's I, I ran out of steam. So. He's out of steam. So, uh, for Jake and Trev, everything live, I'm Trev. I'm Jake. And thanks for watching.